Hey y'all. So today let's talk about boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Let's talk about boundaries. I've got some of my fringe hanging. Isn't that cute? Cute like me. <laughs> so I went to a friend's surprise birthday party today and it was legit, meaning she had no freaking clue that they had a party for her today. It was perfection. She looks like she might be in her 50s. Honey, she's 70. I was floored when they told me how old she was. I was floored. So, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, some people did their testimony and they talked about how they were kind of, some people were shy when they first met her and tried to avoid her. So I figured I'd tell the truth too. <laughs> She's boisterous. And when I first seen her, I was like, mm, yeah, no. And I did everything I could to avoid her. And I'm sure they were all looking at, I saw them looking at me like, oh God, what is she going to say? I said, but. She's got a magnetism that pulls you in and she has a knack for making you feel like you're the only person in the room. And I mean every bit of that. She's just, uh, she's boisterous, but she's super talented. She's super smart. She's a singer. She plays guitar. I think she plays guitar. She's a performer. She, you know, she performed. She used to work at um, the hospital, one of the hospitals here in town and she just got a lot going on and she just has a lot of friends and she's made an impact on a lot of people's lives in a good way, not in a bad way, like a lot of people have. So I had a good time. I did. I really enjoyed myself. Anyway, so let's talk about boundaries and I will give you a prime example of a person right now who is on punishment by me. I put him on restriction. He's on restriction. I'm not talking to him until next year, and I'm serious. After Thanksgiving, after Christmas, I might talk to him for the new year, and I might not. He is being put in time out, and I will tell you why. And I've known him ever since I was a baby. Well, not a baby, but I was super young. He's on punishment. The reason why is because... He did something twice that he has never done before, ever, ever. He said he was going to do something and he didn't do it. And then when I jumped his world about it, he turned around and did it again. This is what I'm going to do. And this is when I'm going to do it. And then did not do it and didn't apologize or explain or anything. So now I'm going to put you on punishment. I'm not going to speak to you until I feel like speaking to you. There has to be repercussions or people will continue to do the same thing. So they have to hurt. They have to hurt. Is it going to hurt him to not talk to me for the holidays? Oh, yes. But I don't care. Because I've already told you. I've already told you a couple times and you still keep doing it. I mean, you did it twice. Two times too many. And yes, I have told him why I'm not speaking to him. You have to have boundaries with people. If it's a relationship and the person is being overtly disrespectful, you got two choices. You can f forgive them or, you know, let them say they're sorry and pull out some tears and whatever. Or you could give them repercussions, not speak to them for a while and then eventually speak to them. Or if they're a narcissistic person, your best bet is to get rid of them. Because they're not going to stop. They're going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. Okay. So I don't feel bad about not talking to him. I did tell him. I texted him and told him why. <clears throat> and oh, well. I know a lot of times, especially women, we have the nice disease. 
no matter what the hell somebody does, we forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive. So they get worse and worse and worse and worse. Because all they have to do is buy you some flowers and chocolates or cry or whatever, and you will forgive them. They're not sorry. They're going to keep going. If they're narcissistic or toxic, otherwise toxic, they're going to keep doing what they're doing. You have to stop. And then, and then, and then hold it. Then there's things that are unforgivable. Cheating putting their hands on you, being verbally abusive, okay? Those are unforgivable. The cheating, we're in the days of HIV, right? This isn't back in a day where people would do it in discretion. You go to the doctor, get a shot for the whatever STI they give you, right? You get a shot and you're good. No, 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 no. Now your life is literally on the line. This isn't a little indiscretion and boys will be boys like the stupidness we were told back in the day. You got to overlook it. You got to stand by your man. If he does something stupid, you just got to forgive him. Men can't help themselves. The hell they can't. Okay. No, 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 no. Because them catching something could kill you. Okay. Some things are unforgivable. You can forgive, but you're done. Permanently done with that person. I'm not going to hold anger and animosity. I'm out. That's, that's it. I'm out. You cannot be too nice. You cannot be too forgiving. You can't keep overlooking. You can't say, well, you know, that person has been under a lot of stress. So yeah, you know, that, 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 nope, 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 no excuses. Verbal abuse, physical abuse, cheating, any type of addiction, whether it be watching adult movies or drugging or gambling, all of those can be addictions. That's a, that's a no go too. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. And if you know, when you're seeing somebody that they have an addictive personality and they're already addicted to something, why would you get serious with them? Because you're begging for problems. I know somebody told me one time that when they were growing up, their father had a gang gambling problem and couldn't pay. And one time they came home from school and all the furniture was gone because he sold it because he couldn't pay his bill. That's what you're looking for. That, I mean, that's the crap that you're looking forward to. So any type of addiction should also be a no-go. Okay. That's a no-go. Lying. You can't be trust, you know, you're not trustworthy. That's a no-go too. It's just, that's it. Can't do it. I'm not going to tolerate that. Now, so far as the individual I had issues with, have issues with recently, um, I think I will initially, it depends on the situation. I'm not going to go out of my way to, to talk to him. I'm not going to go out of my way to be friends with him because I've already seen who he truly, truly is. The mask has fallen all the way off his face. Okay. The mask fell, 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 fell. Now, if people that I do like are sitting at the table when we're, when I'm out and about and I see them all sitting at the table and they want me to come over and say, hi, I will. If he's there, I'll just ignore him. You know, you, this person has been brainwashed and they have allowed certain entities to scrub their brain of all their memories and put the memories in there that they want you to have. Ain't nobody going to do that to me. And I'm so, you know, it's, it's one of those situations where you want to say, when you're ready to join the real world, let me know. Because the world you living in, that ain't how things go. There's no cupcakes on trees and, you know, raindrops or Skittles and... 
bills have been taken away and your birthday. We're going to have two birthdays for everybody every year. Two birthdays instead of one. I don't know what the hell world you living in, but that's not the real world, son. I know a lot of people that are like him. Living in this world that does not exist. Fantasy Island. <laughs> okay. <sighs> anyway. So, yeah, I'm not going to go out of my way to talk to him. I'm just not going to do it. Because he's just... the ma Like I said, the mask has slipped. That good guy image. All gone. All gone. <sighs> but there's also something called betrayal blindness. Let's talk about that. All right. Hold on. I'm going to disappear on you for a second. Let's talk about betrayal blindness. I don't think I've ever talked about it before. I don't think I have. I think I meant to and I didn't or something. I don't know. But let's talk about it. Especially for people who forgive and, and forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive. What is the freaking problem here? What are you doing? <sighs> You're making me tired. You know, there was one guy that was experiencing this. And he's been through very serious betrayals. Very serious. Okay. She terminated the um, the pregnancy, Suppo if she was pregnant, because who only knows, because she's a manipulator and a liar, so who only knows. She's also gotten him arrested. This is a girl he was involved with. She's gotten him arrested. And those two things are not a deal breaker for him. He still wants her back, and I'm like, oh my freaking God, are you serious right now? So, I talked to him about being trauma bonded. No one can help you if you don't want to help yourself. No one can help you if you don't want to help yourself. Okay? It don't matter what people say and how much they remind you of how this person kicked sand in your face with steel toe boots on. It don't matter. If you are determined to continue to be trauma bonded or keep forgiving because all you can remember is the good... Nobody can help you. Now, one way out of remembering just the good is to come back to reality and write down every single thing that that person did that was bad. Every single thing. Nothing good. Nothing good because the good has got you stuck in the first place. That's all you remember. For your mental stability I guess you just remember the good because that makes you feel good but you're forgetting the bad and you're forgetting the evil and you're forgetting the backstabbing and you're forgetting the brutal betrayals you're forgetting all of that so let's talk about betrayal blindness and what is it so to me he's trauma bonded and in addition to that he um he he's suffering from uh betrayal blindness. So betrayal blindness, not seeing what's obvious. This is from Psychology Today, and it's called betrayal blindness, not seeing what's obvious. Key points after betrayal, some people have a freeze response and stay in denial. Stay in denial in order to sustain a crucial bond. Women experience betrayal blindness more than men, shifting to awareness and unawareness of their hurts. Behavior blindness may contribute to unexplained depression, anxiety, and health problems. Okay. During interviews, 
and discussions with people who are estranged from family members, I've often recognized a specific pattern of behavior. Many don't see what's going on right in front of them, plain and obvious to anyone but themselves. For years, they have been wearing blinders, refusing to see events or realities that may have threatened their sense of security or attachment in a relationship. As a result, they are blindsided by difficulties that develop from ignoring problematic behavior in the relationship. When they finally open their eyes and begin to examine the clues they overlooked, they find themselves in a state of shock, fear, anger, and pain. Some of the estranged have said, I never saw them behave this way before. How could I be so stupid? I knew I didn't like certain things, but I thought that that's the way she is and I won't pay any attention to it. I guess I was kicking the can down the road. If I ignored the signs just a little longer, I could pretend things were okay and hope that I would eventually get the relationship I wanted. That don't sound realistic, does it? But in your mind, because your brain wants to save the good and kick the bad away, that's another reason why this happens, because it's excruciating for your brain to remember the obvious. Okay. The lies, the sneaky behavior, very sneaky behavior, backstabbing, cheating, whatever it is that this person has done, your brain does not want to acknowledge that, that, that that's what's really going on because it's, it hurts. So your brain's like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to stick that in a closet somewhere. We're not going to face that, which is detrimental to your emotional well being. Okay. Essentially, those quoted here have created a coping or survival mechanism to which, in which they unconsciously filter information, preventing themselves from acknowledging troubling patterns and problems in their relationships. They simply don't connect the dots. Instead, they look away or keep their blinders on to protect themselves from information that would create chaos, confusion, fear, and suffering. This allows them to sustain their bond with a crucial person whom they depend upon for physical and psychological safety. What is betrayal blindness? <clears throat> In the past, this type of behavior has been labeled as denial, but recent research on attachment, affect regulation, and the mind-body connection has revealed a more complex found foundational purpose underlying these behaviors. Researcher Dr. Jennifer Freed, Professor Emerta of Psychology at the University of Oregon and the founder of the Center for Institutional Courage, has studied <clears throat> the question, what would make us literally not see and not know that which is easily seeable and knowable? She has coined the concept of betrayal blindness to describe the specific state of denial some people stay in after being betrayed. This typically happens when the people or institutions on which a person depends for survival significantly violate that person's trust or well-being. It's a deception that is not fully recognized because, as Freed puts it, attachment trumps betrayal detection. Betrayal blindness commonly occurs in intense, intimate relationships where an individual derives a sense of identity or belonging, such as a marriage, partnership, parent-child, or sibling relationship. Women experience betrayal blindness more often than men. They rotate through percep perceptions. Freed explains, at times completely aware of the betrayal and other times seemingly oblivious as they think, behave, even genuinely feel as if they aren't aware of what their behavior is doing. The core idea is that forgetting and unawareness help the vi abuse victim to survive. The theory draws on two facts about our nature as social beings and our dependence and reliance on others. First, we are extremely vulnerable in infancy, 
which gives rise to a powerful attachment system. Second, we have a constant need to make social contracts with other people in order to get our needs met. Needs met. This has led to the development of a powerful cheater detector system. These two aspects of our humanity serve us well, but when the person we are dependent on is also the person betraying us, our two standard responses to trouble conflict uh, conflict, excuse me, with each other. So I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's a really long um, but I will tell you some of the ways to heal from it. All right. What you need is a safe, supportive relationship, a willingness to stand up to injustice and betrayal, a willingness to comp to <clears throat> claim one's truth, a willingness to risk relationships that may appear superficially adequate, but are actually toxic. So you have to be willing to see the truth is what it boils down to. Dr. Mays, M-A-Y-S, treats people with betrayal blindness by bringing awareness of the pattern into consciousness. Towards that goal, <clears throat> she asks her question, <sighs> she asks her clients these questions. If I were to face this issue, then what would I have to feel? What would change for me? What scares me about it? What would I potentially lose? What support do I need around me to be able to look at and face the reality of my situation? What would help me feel strong enough and grounded enough to look at the issues I've been avoiding? Okay. So psychologytoday.com and just put in betrayal blindness. You don't have to put the entire thing in there, but betrayal blindness not seeing what's obvious. Okay. But just put psychology to psychology today. Really? <laughs> dot com and be, uh, betrayal blindness or psychology today, betrayal blindness, whichever. And you should be able to find it. Um, I've been down that road, been down that road for 25. Oh, let's see. 20, I don't really know, several years, like four or five years in my previous marriage, I would go in and out of, it's not so bad, yes it is, it's not so bad, yes it is, things are getting worse, no it's not, everybody goes through bad times, everybody has bumps in the road. See how we can justify how bad it is, and we can diminish how bad it is, until we really, really, really realize that If this person cared about me, they would come home more often. He was on the road. He was an over the truck, over the road truck driver. So he was, it was easy for him to always be gone. And it got to the point where he came home less and less and less. And then, you know, didn't come home for the holidays. And one excuse, you got to look at narcissist excuses. A lot of them are super lame, but they can't come up with anything else. <clears throat> and uh, he would say, I hate Missouri. I told you all this. I hate Missouri. I hate Missouri. I hate Missouri. I hate Missouri. That's not true. That's not true. Because the chick that he was with, as long as he's been with me, if not longer, is in Missouri. So obviously that's a lie. If Missouri was the bane of your existence, you wouldn't be banging someone else from Missouri. Okay? So that's a freaking lie. After dealing with him, and I, and I admitted that this wasn't probably wasn't fair, but there's reasons for it. Truck drivers will hire criminals. Truck drivers, some truck drivers are dangerous. They don't care if you have a criminal background, depending on the company. They probably all hire criminals. I don't know. But in addition to possible criminal behavior from the past that they've done, they can also easily have a piece of butt in every town. Every single town. So 
no more truck drivers for me. Nope. I'm done with that. It's too easy to cheat. And you could have all kinds of dirtiness in your background and points on your driver's license. I told you a guy killed two people recently and he shouldn't have been driving because his driver's license was suspended, but he was driving for the company and they knew he was driving and they knew his license was suspended. They didn't care. Now they care because two people are dead. So seems to be a free for all. If you want to be a driver for a truck, uh, a trucking company, you want to be a driver, you, they let you get away with everything. And then in addition to that, you got a woman in every town or every state. Nah, nah, uh -uh, uh -uh. no, I'm not going to make, make it easy for you to cheat. I'm just not going to do that. Cause that don't make sense to me. So no more truck drivers for me. I'm done with that. My life is so much more peaceful without anybody else in it anyway. Truth be told, so much more peaceful. No more toxicity. And the toxicity that I do see, I'm going to limit my exposure to it because I don't need that in my life. Okay? So, yeah, I, I've been through the betrayal blindness. Like, sometimes your your vision is crystal clear and you know what is going on. And other times your brain diminishes it like it's not it really isn't that bad and nobody's relationship is perfect everybody goes through stress there's always bumps in the road no 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 the person is married to you and they don't want to come home there's your sign that they don't want to be involved with you somebody else has their attention what somebody else has their attention so there you go. So anyway, betrayal blindness, do some research on it. It's interesting. And it, you know, they used to call it denial, but then they realized that it was almost too complex to be called denial by itself. It, it, so then they coined the phrase betrayal blindness. So someone betrays you over and over and over again. And you're just like, yeah, excuses, reasons. Because your brain don't want to, it doesn't want to face that excruciating reality that this is bad for you and that you need to make changes. And like I said, in the, in the case of a cheater, they're risking your life because they're doing other people and then they're coming home to you. They're doing other people and they come home to you. And one of them, the, the person that I was supposedly married to on paper only because it was never a real marriage, he never narcissists do not consider vows a big deal um he had a child while we were married and lied and said that was his godchild that's not his freaking godchild kids know the dirt their parents have done and his daughter told me kids know the dirt especially the oldest kids they know the dirt and for narcissistic parents they're not really fond of the oldest kids a lot of times because they know too much they seen too much and they know too much. Yep. So, and there's only one way to rectify that. Don't be a dirty person. And then you'll have to worry about somebody writing you out. His daughter ratted him out. And I confronted him about it. I was just curious. This was way after divorce. And um, I was curious. I was like, what's up with that? That's my godchild and put it in capital letters. I said, no, it's not. That's your child. Your daughter told me that that's your child. We were texting about it and he quit talking about it. Don't lie to me. Your child's going to tell me the truth. So stop lying. Stop lying. What you do in the dark comes to light. You didn't know that? I'm numb about it because whatever that's what floats your boat go for you'll be paying child support or whatever you got to do I, that's on you <laughs> but i'm gonna tell you something else when he would emotionally not care for me anymore he wouldn't protect me emotionally when, i don't think he's ever done that truth be told because narcissists don't want to protect you they want to be your worst nightmare oh lord i'm dying me deciding after being abandoned emotionally and not protected. Me deciding to be celibate in my marriage. Marriage. For 10 years, celibate before I finally filed for divorce. That 
probably saved my life because he was banging other people without protection. So me keeping my legs shut for 10 years kept me safe from infections. That kept me safe. So He wasn't celibate. <clears throat> Obviously, he'd make babies with other people. So whatever, whatever, you know, when you go to hell, you'll have to, or when you die, you'll stand before God and you will explain why you did the horrific things that you did. So go ahead and skate now and enjoy your skating and one day you won't be skating. You'll be explaining. So you'll be standing before God and he'll have a list of all the things you did that were horrible and you're going to have to do a lot of explaining. That should be interesting. I wish I could sit there, eat popcorn and watch that. <laughs> wow. Anyway, you guys take care. Much love. Bye.